Hello, welcome to a new video of the course. Now we are going to install a panel plugin, so we are going to see a very simple example of how we can incorporate a new type of graphic within our dashboards. So, we're not going to add any connections or data sources, because we've already done that. We've already seen how to add a data source plugin through a connection. Instead, we are going to administration option. Within administration, apart from other things that we will see in a while in an upcoming section, we have the plugins. Here we can see all the plugins we have installed. You see that it reads, type, all, state, installed, here. In other words, we are looking at plugins of any type which are installed. In fact, if I want to see only, for example, the data source types, I can select that value in the list. We can see if these plugins are installed or if are part of the core. If it reads core, it means that these plugins come by default with the Grafana engine itself. But, for example, the CSV or Infinity engines have been installed by us. You see that it reads installed. If the word signed appears, it means that they have been verified and that they are safe. If I go up here and select the ones that are of panel type, I can see that I have all of these panels installed. You can see that all of them are core because we have not installed any yet. Why? because these belong to the core. In fact, all the graphics we've seen so far are graphics that come included within Grafana. On the other hand, if I go here and choose applications, we will see that I don't have any. App type plugins are the most complex. We'll look at them through example in a while. So, we're going to install a panel type. I select it from the list. In the state field, I'm going to select all so that they are all displayed, including those that are not installed. There are a huge number of panels that I can use and that I can install. The truth is that there are so many that I can't talk about each one of them, but let's take a simple example. Let's take this one that reads Polystat. You can see that it reads by Grafana Labs, that is, it is created by Grafana. There are others from other manufacturers. Sign means that they are verified and that, therefore, we can use them without fear. Okay, if we go over here to Polystat, let's select it. We enter a screen where all the features of this panel appear. What this panel does is showing the information with polygons, using colors that can be set for the thresholds. It comes in handy when we want to see certain information, for example, in this case it is informing us of the disk usage on a machine. In short, we can use it in a fairly simple way. Well, what are we going to do with this? Once we have selected it, we click on install button and the installation process will begin. Once we have installed it, which will not take too long, we can use it within our panels. Of course, if I don't want it or want to remove it, I would have to go back here and, following the same steps we have seen, and with this button you can uninstall it. But for now, since what we want is to create a little example, we're going to go to dashboards. Within dashboards, I'm going to create a new folder, which I'm going to name as 13 plugins, where I'm going to create a dashboard with this visualization, the polystat. So, I create a dashboard and add a visualization. You can select any data source, but I'm going to use servers, because I'm going to do an example with servers. Therefore, select some Prometheus data source. So, we're going to use a connection that allows us to see server information and metrics. Let's select it and, once we are inside, we can go to the list of char types and select polystat. It should be near the bottom of the list. Here you can read, OK, because, obviously, we have to use some metric in order to incorporate the data. This graph, this visualization, is quite complex, it has many properties, let's see the necessary ones to be able to make a small example. Well, in this case we're going to add a very simple metric so that you can see several polygons and you can understand how it works. So, we're going to click on, select metric, press enter, and in the search box, I am going to search for CPU and in the list of metrics I am going to select this one, node CPU seconds total. We click on run query. I'm going to get a lot of polygons. Why? Because if I stand on any of the elements, it shows me the CPU of the machine, the machine, the job and the mode. To give you an idea, I have two servers in this data source, each of them has two CPUs, and within the CPU, for each mode, it shows the information. Let's be a little bit more selective. Let's assume that I only want to see information from a certain machine. In the Label Filters field, I select the Instance field and choose one of the machines. Click on Run Query and now the number of polygons will have been reduced. 
If I hover over it, it shows me the CPU, in this case the zero CPU, the instance, the job and the mode. Since what I really want is to see this at a CPU mode level, I'm going to come down in the button add operation. I select aggregation and then the sum function. I'm going to do a sum aggregation operation with the mode label. I click on the add label button and inside I select mode. If I run it now, I will get of the two CPUs, the total of that machine for each of the CPU modes. Here I have a lot of properties that I can use to do multiple things. You can do a lot of operations, for example, change the way in which the polygons are displayed, the size of the polygons, the text type. For example, I wanted to change the text font to Arial. I can use the font property. You can see that the format of the text has changes. Anyway, as this is a fairly wide visualization that has many properties, remember to practice with it and try all the options it has. Further down, in the unit field, where it reads short, I'm going to change it to bytes, so as to see the information in bytes, kbytes, and megas. Let's make a small example with thresholds to make the graphic more eye-catching. This one does not have the usual thresholds that appear in other of the visualizations we have seen, but has a global threshold property where I can define the thresholds and colors of the polygons. So, I'm going to select Add Threshold. Of course, you have to adapt the exercise to the values that are coming out in your polygons. If the value is greater than zero the polygons are displayed in green. In principle, they all appear in green, obviously. If I add another one threshold and set value of 9000 and I change the color to yellow, some polygons changes to yellow, since they are above that threshold. If I add another threshold and set the color to red and the threshold value to 20,000, I will have polygons with that color that have a higher value. I think that with this you can get an idea of how this type of visualization works, which in the end has served as an excuse for you to learn how to add a panel type plugin. I'll be waiting for you in the next video, where we're going to see another type of plugin.